This is going to be a video showing you how to make a Flappy Birds clone. Um, so start by going into Unity and taking a new project. So give it a name. Make sure you choose a folder where you know what it is. And for this one we want definitely just a 2D game. So make sure you take 2D game. Give it a name and remember that name there will be the folder that is created underneath this folder where your project will be. And hit create project. So once Unity appears, I would always go to layout and take default just to give the default layout for a 2D game. Um, you can rename the scene if you want um, by right clicking on where it says sample scene and do save. Um, or save scene as actually. In fact, if you go down here actually to scenes and just click on the name there, you can rename it to main or whatever you want to call it and then save the scene again. <coughs> Um, we're going to add some media in, which is always the first thing I'll do. Click back on assets down at the bottom here and create a folder for graphics. Create one for sounds or audio, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm doing that, by the way, by right clicking in the assets pane here and then going left click on create and folder. And I'm also going to create one for animation because we're going to have an animated bird in this game. Um, I'm then going to drag and drop some media into this. So I've got, it's only these five bits of media that we're going to use for this game, so not a lot. So we've got what's called a sprite sheet. I'm going to open it up so you can see that. So this is what a sprite sheet looks like. Um, and you can create those in various programs. A free one is a program called Spriter 2D from Brash Monkey which some of you may have seen my tutorials for. Um, and that is what this was made in. So we've got one, two, three, four, five columns across the way and four rows down the way to make up this sprite sheet, which will give us an animated bird flapping. I'm going to drag that into the animation folder. Um, I'm going to drag pipe into the graphics folder. I'm going to take grass and put it into the graphics folder as well. And flap is going to go into the sounds folder. You can use this other grass one here if you want to give a foreground a bit of grass that the bird can go behind, but I'm not going to bother doing that today. Okay, so once we've done that, well, last one, make a folder for scripts because we are going to need to add code to make our game work. Okay, so once we've got all that media in, first thing we want to do is create our scene. So if you haven't done any unit before, remember this is your camera and in 2D it looks down in your scene. I can look at it in 3D to see what it does, but it looks down and whatever you can see from the camera is what you see when your game runs. If you click on game, that is what you see. And hold on a second, cuz. Okay, so let's drag our background in first. So let's go into graphics and we're going to drag our background in now. We want to make sure that it fills the whole scene um, so that we're playing our game. We can see it and if you click in game up here you can see what the game looks like. So we don't want all this blue. So what we're going to do is resize it. Now you can either resize it just by pulling the corners and stretching it, which I'm not a big fan of. Or you can do it properly. Um, by using the resize tool here, this one here. You can also type sizes over in the scale over here if you want as well, that's all the way, but if we resize it properly to keep it in, in um, proportion, and I'm gonna move it a bit. I wanna make sure it fills the whole thing. And to be honest with this, it doesn't hurt actually to be a wee bit bigger than, than the actual what you see. It's probably safer to go bigger. If I hit game now, you can see that's what we're going to see in our game. Okay. Um, but we want to make two backgrounds because this is going to be a scrolling game. So we're going to right click on grass and take duplicate. Um, and we've got grass to bracket one there, but it's basically a second copy of the grass. You can rename that if you want to call it grass two if you want to make it nicer. Um, and then by 
by doing that we can use the cross here and just move this okay and try and get it joined up you can click down on the middle mouse button to move the scene to do this and then try and get it joined up as precisely as you can if you need to zoom in there to do that please do that okay so we want to get it touching we do not want any gap so zoom in and make sure there's no gap okay that looks pretty good to me i don't think anyone could tell the gap there notice that these uh, images map together so you it's not so easy to see the the join okay so that's our background done i'm going to double click on camera to go back to the main camera now what we're going to do is add in our animation so if i click on animation click on this bird animation down here what we need to do is go to the top right and click on single and change it to multiple then go to sprite editor after you've clicked on multiple hit apply and this window should appear what we want to take in here is slice but we don't want to do it automatically because this is a sprite sheet that's evenly spaced out so we want to take from automatic and change it to count and we want to take five columns and four rows because that's how many columns and rows are in this animation click and slice and you can kind of see it with the white lines there that it's sliced up um, click and apply um, and then close this window by hitting the X up here okay and if you've done that correctly if you hit the wee triangle play button beside the animation you should see now that it has split it up okay next step is just to drag it into the scene so drag it onto the scene okay and give it a name like bird animation and save it, I'll hit enter to save it make sure you change the order and layer to at least one perhaps two to make sure that it's on top of the background which should be in layer zero okay um, hit play up the top and we should have an animated bird okay now that's fine but I'm not quite too happy with how fast it's flapping okay so we're gonna stop that so if you click on these two uh, these two icons that have appeared here if you double click on that one it brings up this okay this diagram and the orange one that you just named if you double click on that you can take the loop time off we don't want to take that off because we do want this animation to loop so you wouldn't do that in this case okay but what we might do is click on it once instead of double clicking. If you double click, it gives you that. But single click will give you this one. And what we might want to do is change the speed. So I'm going to change that to four because that will make it faster. And if you hit play again, it's now flapping a lot faster. And I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, let's go back to scene now. Okay, so there we are. We've got a bird in the scene that's flapping. Let's do the next bit. So let's add on physics. So in Flappy Bird, the bird falls. That's gravity. Let's not code that. Let's use the physics engine in Unity. So I'm going to click on Add Component, go to Physics 2D, click on Rigid Body 2D. Um, I'm going to up the gravity a bit because I want a bit more than the default gravity. But I do want also linear drag. Linear drag accounts for things like air resistance and friction and should always really be put on in most cases. And I am now going to hit the play button. And what should happen is our bird flaps and falls off the screen. So yeah, so the next step we need is to give you a way to stop it falling off screen. And this is where the code comes in. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the hierarchy and make sure I've clicked on bird sprite sheet. I'm going to go to add component right to the bottom and take new script. And I'm going to call this flap because this is going to be the script that makes them flap. So if I click back in assets, I would always, before opening it, move this into the scripts folder. Although notice I have spelt that wrong, so let's type that again. Let's right click and rename that to actually say scripts instead of whatever I had. And go into your scripts folder now, double click and flap and open 
the script in Visual Studio. You can even use an editor like Notepad to do this, but you're much better to use Visual Studio because it helps you with the error checking. Okay, so here we have Visual Studio up. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do in here is add a script to make it flap. So first of all, I'm going to do a private variable, which is a rigid body, because I want to get a copy of the rigid body on the board. I'm also going to do a public variable, which is just going to be a floating point number called flap power. Okay, public because I want to set it inside Unity. In start, all we're going to do is say RB, which is our copy of the rigid body, and I'm going to get the component and get the rigid body. There only is one rigid body on it, so we just have to say get rigid body. Don't forget your semicolons. <clears throat> and then we're going to check for you hitting a key, so we're going to say input get key down, key code space, um, or we're going to allow for mouse clicks. So I'm going to say input get key down, key code mouse zero, which is the left mouse button. And I would always do the two squiggly brackets after an F statement in C sharp. I'm going to make that bigger so you can see that all. Okay, so this line of code basically checks for you hitting the space key down or the two lines means or, or you hit the mouse, left mouse button. Um, yeah, so then what we're going to say is RB add force and I'm going to say new vector 2, 0, 1. Okay, now 0, 1 is because we are going to flap and we're going to allow you to move up the way when you hit the space bar or the mouse button and basically zero one is the up direction is the up vector zero because x zero means no movement left or right y equals one because up the way is positive we're going to multiply that by our flat power that we have yet to set and that's the code done for making it flap so we're going to either attach it to Unity or just save it. I'm just, I don't think I've got any errors, so I'm just going to do the save button here. I'm going to go back into Unity. Oh, let me, I'll let you just look at I'll just keep that on the screen for a minute if you're doing that code. You can pause it here if you want. Okay, so I'm going to back into Unity now. I'm going to click on the bird. I'm going to make sure that I have given it a flat power. So let's do that so you have some kind of flat power because otherwise it is not going to work. Um, because 0 times 1 is 0, but 400, which is what I've put in times 1 on the Y, will mean it will have an up force of 400. So let's hit play, and I'm going to hit the mouse button or space, and I can now flap away to my heart's content. Okay, cool. So the next part is we are going to make it move to the right. So back into your script. This is just going to move at a constant speed, but I'm going to make it a public variable so that you can change it. So public float horizontal, and we call it horizontal force. Um, I am then going to say outside of def because this is going to be constant. It's nothing to do with this statement. So I'm going to say rb dot add force new vector to. And hopefully you've guessed by this point that the vector is one zero because we want to move to the right and x is positive to the right. So one to the right times our horizontal force that we just created. And what that will do now is whatever we set horizontal force to, it will multiply the vector by that. So if I set it to say, let's see what I'm going to set it to. I'm going to set it to five. Okay, so let's save that and go back into Unity. If I set that to 5, it's going to move constantly every time this update loops. Because remember, update repeats up to about 60 times a second. It's going to do a vector of 5, 0 because 
if I set horizontal force to five. So I'm gonna click on the bird, go to where it says, hopefully horizontal force, there it's appeared and set it to five. Okay, back, see that down there? So 405, I'm gonna hit play, I'm gonna get ready to hit space with the mouse button. And as you notice now, he flies off to the side. But he disappears because the camera isn't moving. Now we need to attach this camera to the bird so that it moves with it. And that's back into the code again. So there's a couple things with this. Um, the main part is just to get the camera moving. So let's do that first. So public camera cam. I'm just going to call the camera cam. So I'm making a public variable, which is of type camera because we're going to use it for the camera. And then what we're going to do is camera transform position which is the position of the camera, which is the vector three. So I need to say new vector three. And notice here, the only one we're really changing is the X because we want to move um, alongside the X. So I'm going to say transform position X comma, and then I'm going to keep cam transform position Y. So the Y we're just sitting back to its, its current position. That's why this one is cam transform and this one is just transform. So transform is the bird, cam transform is the camera. Um, I'm going to set the what, the Z based on the camera as well. You could put zero there to be honest because this is a 2D game and it's always nearly always going to be zero there. Okay, so if I do that, um, save it, go back into Unity, hit play. What we should have is the bird will flap and the camera doesn't move with them because I forgot one thing. So the, the bit I forgot to do was click on the bird. You notice it says cam none down here to the right, bottom right. You need to drag the camera from the top left in the hierarchy down onto where it says none. So we're telling it to use that camera. Okay, we could have done code to get the camera because there's only one camera in the scene, but this is a better approach to it because it means that if you did have two cameras, you could easily assign the right one. If I hit play now and get ready to flap, and the flap, and there we go, our bird is flapping away and the camera is moving in the background because that moves too. Now, I don't really like the way it starts here because as you notice, the bird is right in the middle of the screen. Right? I would rather sure have it to the left like we have here. Okay, so let's do that. So let's move it forward a little bit. So instead of saying cam, Okay, sorry for the interruption there. So what we're going to do is, instead of saying transform position X, we're going to say plus five, and you can play about with that number. That is going to move the camera in front, five in front of the bird. So let's try that out. I'll leave that up on the screen a second. If you want to pause it here at this point to see the code, this is a good point in the video to pause it and try and get that code all in. Okay, so here we go. Okay, there we go. So the camera's ahead of it now. So the good thing about that is the bird starts more to the left and it gives it more time to see the buildings coming. If you know the game we're making, you know that he's going to try to avoid things. Okay, one last bit to the end of this video. Um, so we're not going to do the buildings, but I do want to stop it. I do want to create an, what's called endless scrolling. So we want to take these two backgrounds and basically what we want to do is when the bird gets past this background here and it's far enough into this one so that you can't see this one, we are going to take this background and we are going to put it there. And then we're going to do the same with that one. We're going to move it around and put it in front and so on so that we basically have an endless scrolling experience. Okay, so let's do that in code. Okay. So this, this is not, this the code is probably not ex, an exact science, but I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do back width and it's going to be a private and we're going to use that to hold the width of the background because we need to know that. I'm going to create um, a private game object called back one and back two, which is going to hold the backgrounds. 
Okay, and then to start, we're going to get those backgrounds. So we're going to say back one equals game object find back one. Okay, so we're finding the objects by name. This is a useful bit of coding to know how to do. Right, and we're going to find back two. Now, for that to work, obviously the backgrounds need to be called that. So I'm going to go up here and call it instead of grass. So I'm going to click on the first background, go up to where it says it up here in the spectrum, call it back one. And then on this one, I'm going to click up here and call it back two. Okay, so now we've got back one and back two, or background one and background two. You can use different names if you like. I'm going to try and get the background width by saying back width equals back one, get component, renderer, which is the thing that draws the graphic on the screen, bounds, size, it's quite long, that and the X. So we only need the X component, which is the, the width of the background. That will get the width of the background. Okay, and then the code basically to swap things around. So, after we move the camera, let's do an if statement. So this is a bit complex. So we have if transform position x, which is the position of the bird, is greater than background one, or back one, transform position x, which means that the bird is ahead of the background. Now the problem is that the position is the middle of everything in Unity by default. So the position of the bird is the middle of the bird. The position of the background is the middle of the background. So that's not go going to quite work. So I'm going to add onto that the background width, okay, times 0 0.75, so three quarters, okay, to basically make sure that I've cleared the background. It probably should actually be half there, but I'm going to just make sure it's totally cleared by saying that, okay. Um, you don't definitely need the brackets there because in programming it uses correct mathematical um, procedure and that multiplication should happen before addition but I like to put the brackets anyway to make it clear what's happening okay I'm going to put squigglies in so basically if you if the first background has disappeared off to the left we are going to move it so we're going to set it to equal a new vector um, but kind of like before, the only thing we're changing is the first position and the first, the X position and the X position is going to be based on the tran the back ground two dot position dot X plus the back width, which is going to put, because of the same size, it's going to put the second, the first background exactly one width of the background ahead. Okay. And it's basically going to move it to the right. And we can set the y and x to be the current position. We don't need to change them. Again, you could put in zero for the z, but I'm going to do it correctly. Okay. I am now going to just copy and paste, to be honest. Copy and paste is a programmer's friend. Not everybody agrees, but I would say it is. And then what we're going to say is background two instead of background one. And then we're going to change this to background two instead so of background one. We're going to change that from background two to background one. And that one from background one to background two. So we're basically swapping everything around to do the same for the other background so that when the background two goes out, it gets um, swapped around to the front as well. I am going to save that. And I am going to run that. And now, hopefully, if I've done that right, we are going to have endless scroll in here. Right, we're, in, we're definitely past the first set of backgrounds. And yes, I think it has worked. We have got an endless scrolling game. Don't go away, bird. Okay, so that is the end of the first tutorial. We have our bird, it flaps, and it goes forever. Come back for video two.